Every problem rests on a certain set of presuppositions. In the case of the mind-body problem and also the heart problem, they both rest on the possibility of mind. So even if you negate the mind, if you say an eliminativist or physicalist, you still presuppose the possibility of mind because otherwise there would be nothing to negate. It's a purely conceptual, transcendental-like argument, if you want to say so. And I said, now you can have two strategies. You can either address the mind-body problem within the framework of that set of presuppositions slash the possibility of mind. That has been done, various mind-body solutions, uh, and so on and so on. I use a different way. I look so you can try to resolve the problem, provide an answer. At the same time, you can, on the other hand, you can also try to see, let's say, maybe we look at the presuppositions of the mind problem, and then maybe we can say these presuppositions are conceptually, ontologically, empirically not plausible. Then you would need to have other presuppositions. And then you dissolve the mind-body problem, because if presupposition A, upon which the mind-body problem rests, is replaced by presupposition B, that means to dissolve the mind-body problem. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And I would say, without going into detail here, that's the same for the heart problem, because it makes the heart problem is only possible on the basis of the presupposition that there is brain and mind. Without that assumption, without that possible assumption, I'm just here of logical conceivability. Yeah? It's very important. I'm not making ontological statements here. Just logical conceivability. Uh, without that assumption, you could not even raise the question for the heart problem. 